Bioware executive producer Christian Daly has announced via the Bioware blog that Anthem Next, the title's planned initiative poised to revamp the game with new content, has been cancelled. So Uh, you're talking about a derailed trade. This comes upon the heels of Anthem's publisher, EA, uh, spending the last two weeks to reevaluate the status of the title as to whether or not it justified the amount of time and resources required to bring it uh, back into the grace of gamers. Uh, Anthem released to middling review scores and to even worse decline of players due to a lackluster endgame and a malnutrition of continued content. Uh, Daily ends the blog by reaffirming that Anthem's online features will remain in service, but that the team will be moving onwards to strengthen Dragon Age 4 and, f- and a future Mass Effect titles as well as apparently star wars the old republic i always forget that that is still a thing it is still a thing holy shit it is. yeah as someone who played it i can confirm it is still a thing i played um, the demo for like a minute has anyone here played anthem no i played the demo yeah I yeah i was in no no i was in the pre-order demo so Not you had to pre-order one. it to get it I was in that one. I then canceled my pre-order. <laughs> I was in the open free beta that came out after that one. I think um, it just comes down to, because I feel like, I don't know if we talked about this before, but but, but Destiny was in a really freaking rough place for like the first year it came out. And you can argue even like halfway through Destiny 2's lifespan. But the one thing it yeah. had that constantly got people to come back, even despite the, the lackluster content, the lack of continued content, as well as... um like the overly grindy nature of it, the low freaking drop rates. I never got a fucking Galahorn. Fuck you. Oh, um, don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, but but despite all that, the reason why people kept playing uh, Destiny is because the gameplay was just that freaking good. And it, that was, w- it was satisfying and, as hell. Was like, it? I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Destiny but, uh, like, what? Was, 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 was as easy to pick up and play and have fun with in the same way that mm-hmm. like when halo came out and it was like oh shit like this is the this is the new hot first person shooter like that's how destiny one felt despite not picking not having the story to back it up like halo did exactly destiny two improved on both but also because of the this shit with activision that really hit them hard where like all the weird monetization and the, that now that they've made it free to sorry that's a whole other discussion yeah um, anyway but say, um with what you were saying but yeah, so like the base gameplay, um, it's just like that bungee magic. It's why Halo is so good. It's why Destiny is so good. It's I, I would say it's alongside Call of Duty and then maybe um, fuck. There's another game I usually go to, probably Titanfall. But it's it's like the best experience you can have playing a first person shooter with a controller. And the mm-hmm. in the PC version plays even better. It's it's freaking amazing how much that transition works between the versions of Destiny Two. But the gameplay is what saved destiny destiny would not be where it is if it if it, if it had shitty gameplay and where that made up for all the other as- aspects in destiny like whether there's a story lack of contents the grind whatever um anthem didn't even have the gameplay to support it and it was even more so worse off and than destiny and all those other aforementioned categories so it 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 had no appeal to me whatsoever yeah. like the only thing it had going for it was you can fly like Iron Man, and if I remember from um, Jason yeah, Schreier's book, were awesome. Like the yeah. shit was basic as hell. It just felt like nothing. But the flying mechanics themselves were super intuitive. Mm-hmm. Um, in Jason on, Schreier's okay, book, um, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, he kind of goes over the development cycle of uh, of Anthem, where they originally did have flying in the game. But they did take it out because it kind of ruined a lot of the flow of the game as well, like their level design, how systems worked. And so when they so EA pushed them to have flying at the last second so they could show it for for the um, for its initial trailer. I think it was an E3. Uh, So that kind of locked them in and they only had what I think it was like less than a year to push it out. That alone set Anthem back so freaking far. So maybe if they had had a second go around of making an Anthem 2, that would have ironed things out, let them actually focus on improving the game versus trying to like rush this system that they weren't originally planning to to have stay in the game. Mm-hmm. But as is, there is absolutely nothing about Anthem that it, that was ever interesting to me. So I'm just it's it's nothing lost for me personally. It- it to me it lacked what made a bioware game a bioware game fucking aliens well i mean you aren't wrong 
I mean, I, okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie. A part of the reason why I canceled my pre-order was because Bioware said they weren't going to have any romance options in it. And I went, I'm sorry that I don't want your damn game done. But it's like, it does it honest to God. When I played it, it didn't feel like a Bioware game to me. And that was one of the main reasons why I wasn't a big fan of it. Because like, you know, when you go into a Bioware game, you kind of already have this preconceived notion of what you're getting into. And when I played Anthem, it just didn't feel like a Bioware game, which is why I just kind of lost interest in it. But I was totally all here for those that were still playing it. And I was like, hey, man, you like the thing? You go enjoy the thing. You go do the thing. You go fly like Iron, Iron Man. Good on you. And I actually got excited when they said that they were like reworking Anthem because I remember the like Final Fantasy fourteen re re rework and like how those games became like fucking amazing. And I was thinking it's Bioware. If they're given more time, Anthem is probably going to be something fucking cool. I would say the uh, Final <laughs> Fantasy comparisons um, an interesting one because I hadn't thought about this originally. Um, despite all the issues with um, the original Final Fantasy fourteen launch, so pre um, Realm Reborn. Uh, people were still like super crazy actively playing the mm-hmm. game, whereas Anthem just dropped off so freaking early. Yeah. So it's and like, it's why even bother making there's... content for people that aren't even going to play it? It's yeah. crazy because there's still people playing the old the old re- Republic, and I can't remember the last time that game had a content drop. <laughs> and there are it's... people still like actively addicted to that game. And like I said, good for them. I played it for a while. It was just a Bioware RPG that was Star Star Wars. You can like romance people and do all the Bioware R- R- RPG stuff. Like that's awesome. When did that game have a content drop? But it still has like an insanely active fan base I, of people. I feel like we actually have to, to play off something you said, Sarah. I think we have to ask ourselves: When was the last time like some someone saying, "Well, this is a Bioware title," actually meant something? Yeah. Not since twenty. <laughs> when did Mass Effect Three come out? Twenty twelve. <laughs> I mean, I would even argue, I would even argue, I mean, again, this is just because I'm not as big a fan of the series as y'all are, but, like, I would even maybe argue, like, before Mass Effect 3 or 2, as far Dragon as... Dragon like, Age. When you, I, yeah, like, maybe Dragon Age Origins, because even though, and that game's imperfect, but that at least still, that felt, like, you, how you mm-hmm. said that, what it, how it feels like a Bioware game, even if I still feel it's kind of reductive to say, well, to basically assume a studio's not going to change, at the same time, I know exactly what you mean. Because, like, Mass Effect 1, Dragon Age Origins feel like Bioware games in the same way that, like, Night Old Republic 1 did. Um, I, I, they're, they're completely well, different Baldur's games, Gate, but they right? still feel, yeah, but they still feel like a Bioware game. Like, when I played, so Dragon Age Inquisition is one of my favorite games of all time. It obviously has problems, but that's the only game. I also I've haven't played. played past Dragon Age Origins. Like, that's the thing. So, <laughs> like, there are large Inquisition, swaths of time I have not played Bioware games. Yeah. In- Inquisition is one of my favorite games of of all time. Andromeda plays a lot like Inqu- Inquisition, which is probably why I like Andromeda as much as I do. And even though Inquisition is completely different from what Origins and Dragon Age 2 was, it's still a Bioware game. When I play it, I'm getting those Bioware tingles. It's like I'm like, oh, it's a Bioware game. Yeah. It's, it's everything I like about a Bioware game. When I played Anthem, I felt like it was nowhere near what I, and of course, everyone's going to think their their definition of a Bioware game is going to be different than to mine. Anthem felt nothing like a Bioware game to me. I feel it like felt a lot like, of that also comes down to, like, you could feel the strings of freaking EA saying, we need a Destiny game. You yeah. need a game that fits. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's just like, like, and it's, it's, it's actually kind of sad because you can feel like with, like, with like Anthem's lore, and the way that like the hub area is set up, you can feel that Bioware wanted to put like Bioware things into it, but EA was just so like, we need nah. we need a destiny, we need this fly like Iron Iron Man. Like it just you know, it's legitimately sad actually, when you think about I'm it. I'm actually really interested, uh, Dominic. Did you know about Anthem whatsoever? I remember seeing a trailer for it and thinking it kind of looked bland, like it looked like the same as other games. Mm-hmm. Um, like it, it kind of lacked a personality yeah it didn't seem like it didn't have anything to stand out with so i just didn't care for it It was one of those where like i didn't miss it i just avoided it right um i guess one follow-up question that's also interesting and everyone else can chime in for it also um 
for for the way that certain games are going now, like they're trying to be Destiny clones and they're relying on being like as a games as a service. Does it make you hesitant to want to jump into one of these games knowing that the publisher can just basically pull the plug and just be like, we're not going to support this thing that you've spent like countless hours in. Does, does that deter you at all? Hmm. Uh, Cause you, you say they could pull it at any moment. Right. And so it's that like kind of, you don't know factor. So if you think it's not going to happen, then yeah, I'm going to go in, I'm going to, it's going to happen. And then once they pull the plug, I'm going to be angry about it and then move on. But if like, I know going in like this probably won't last. Yeah. I'm going to kind of, depending on what type of game it is and like, is it going to be worth it? That's going to be a question I ask myself before I like pay for it and depending on the price and everything. And like, do I have to do in-game purchases? It's so many variables to like knowing ahead of time, this isn't going to last, but unknowing I could see why like people could be angry where you spent countless hours on something and then it's just gone. Right. Hmm. Uh, what about you, Corey? Um, I believe I don't know. I just I have this feeling that um AAA companies and 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 game game creating studios are really going through a sort of shooting themselves in the foot like period right now and um with the exception of uh Capcom doing I was phenomenal. Just- yeah, with the exception do. of Capcom Capcom's doing a fantastic great. work with Resident <laughs> Evil. Um, however, it wasn't always like that because yeah. we all remember Resident Evil 6. Um, oh, I, I just streamed that yesterday. <laughs> I, I, I will defend Resident Evil 6, but I will admit this playthrough is making me go like, There's, this is not good. Anyways, um, it, it, so we're really seeing kind of like a, 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 um, a renaissance of indie game creators rising up and and really capturing the attention of gamers right now um i think that's because that gamers as a core we want something more than just the rag and tag shoot them up gamers constant up. third you know yeah <laughs> gamers rise up so it's like the constant like third person or first person point of view of of shooting enemies and just it's just it, it, like like uh, like um, Dominic said. It, it, it's it felt like it felt like the same thing. It felt like a clone of something else. It's like we see these AAA companies constantly coming out or pumping out similar content than a because they because that's what's popular right now. But then you see all of these indie companies that are literally people who just are friends and they are knowledgeable about making a game. And it's like three people and they make this fantastic game that sells so many. It's like, it's like millions of copies. And, and um, then the, the, the triple a companies are sitting there with their thumbs up their asses. Like, well, what the hell are we supposed to do? What are we doing wrong? Maybe listen to what people actually want. Maybe, maybe inject people who will create art in the gaming community instead of, I don't know, uh, another first person shooter for a, 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 some 12 year old sitting in his mom's basement in Texas. You know, it's like, <laughs> Man, burn on Texas. <laughs> they need, they need the basement. It's warmer down there right now. Corey. That's yeah, true. I'm sorry. Is. I'm sorry to rag on Texas after the recent events that happened, yeah, it's all good. but you get my visual, you get my visual. <laughs> No, I feel you. And like yeah. when I first saw the trailer for Anthem, I thought it was something for like X. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. just that's how it seemed to me. Yeah. Let's see. I didn't, I didn't mean to go on a rant either, but I was like. <laughs> we have about 30 minutes left. Should we go ahead and jump over to what we've been playing or should we try to squeeze in this Days Gone story? Uh I don't care about you know what? I, think gonna, I think I'm going to save Days Gone because I know <laughs> Mesa has strong thoughts. I did have one last thing to say about the Bioware conversation. Yeah, good. Um, it almost feels ironic to me because I'm thinking back to considering how Bioware is just basically being strangled by EA and is not even like really the team it used to be. And it, it reminds me of when like back when Bioware was the big hot shit of like, oh, they made Night Seal to Public and they made all these cool RPGs. They're the RPG fucking Western dev and they're doing all this cool shit. 
before they were brought by EA, and how Obsidian was kind of the redheaded stepchild of like. I feel like that's probably a really problematic term. Um, the, the Obsidian was just kind of like the 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 black ambitious, sheep. Yeah, the black sheep, like ambitious not a lot of people in like as far as people who are playing the games were fo- at least my age were following that like obsidian was being like mis not mismanaged that every time they would be contracted out to work for a company like ea or like another one like uh, whatever companies they're working for they were given like ridiculous deadlines unfair shit non-stop and they were doing the best they could and so they were just not releasing bomb after bomb but like you'd have overly ambitious now like the original release of nice little public 2 that game is great but that version of that game is busted to to today unless you get the restored content mod which is phenomenal um but like and i'm just thinking now obsidian has has not only like shake shaken off that old idea of like oh they're they're the they make these other things that aren't really that good or like the state that fallout new vegas the fact that fallout new vegas was as buggy as it was when it first came out and they made that shit in like less than a year i think it was it was less than a year i'm pretty sure it was like eight months or something even if you're using existing assets that's a that's fucking ridiculous and now and then now that's heralded as one i mean it was always seen as the best the better one but by a lot of people but like that's heralded as one of the best 3d rpgs first person rpgs ever made that people a lot of people and myself included will say it's the best fallout game um you have i mean you're not wrong now you have obsidian like has shown what they can do now have people actually giving them money and they've had this deal with microsoft now which is not them being strangled it's them being given the money and basically let do what they're gonna do mm-hmm. like well, yeah, and i was i was gonna add like it's then, just ironic then, to me to see that change in power i guess that power right power shift well i was gonna and i was gonna add uh that because then you're getting into like um the culture and the attitude of the 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 shareholders the you know the the, yeah. the people that are giving them the money and it's like okay what are their shareholders like are these shareholders that are strangling them like you said like are they constantly like we want our money what where's our return where's our return release the game release the game release the game mm-hmm. my grandson likes the Fortnite. why make it like the Fortnite? <laughs> right a exactly yacht now yeah so it's like you you either have shareholders that are constantly like that or you have shareholders who are are acting in good faith of they know they will get their return eventually if they are if they are patient and um and truly uh believe in the company that's making the game yeah. you know mm-hmm. so um let's see just 